And hey, everyone. Welcome to a, a brand spanking new episode. Don't stop that. Uh, of what, Duncan what, and Bo. What, 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 oh, my God. Duncan and Bo. Brand spanking new one. <laughs> it's, it's already turned into prop comedy. I'm really uncomfortable <laughs> with this. So uh, this is, of course, uh, not just Duncan and Bo Come Correct. This season is uh is all about the canadian horror television series uh slasher and we have made our way to episode six we're in the the home stretch duncan you say that <laughs> feels like there's a whole lot of road still to tow <laughs> there's i'll tell you this has been a real journey so far and we've only got two episodes left yeah. and, which means I, here's what i propose and you and i have not talked about this Ooh. uh yet so this is this is how the sausage gets made right here in front of the audience. <laughs> I propose before we jump into say a season 2 of slasher <laughs> that we take just one episode, a, a palate cleanser if you mm-hmm. will, and we'll just do something we'll the, kind of fun. And I don't, I don't know what that is yet, but we're going to do a non-slasher episode because as much fun as these are to record, watching slasher is kind of painful. Yeah, I um, recorded uh, an upcoming episode of Podcast Under the Stairs on Friday night mm-hmm. uh, with a uh, long-time Podcast Under the Stairs kind of co-host at large, uh, The Baz, who has told me that he is working his way through season three of Slasher at the moment, purely because his OCD will not let him take off his Netflix queue until he's watched it. And he's like, how are you, how are you and Bo getting on with that season one? And I was like, it's it's bad. He's like, oh, it's it's so bad. He's like, are you doing them all? I was like, yeah. He's like, season two is worse. Oh, (laughs) really? (laughs) Hey, look, I'll just say it because I want to put the invite out there. Anytime he wants to join us to talk about an episode of Slasher, the 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 red carpet is officially rolled out. I will I will let him know that he might actually take you up on that. That would be it, that would be fucking amazing. I, I, would, I will I, I will let him know. He did tell me that season three is basically season one, but more woke. So okay. Good. So Good. I was like, interesting. I was like, does it add anything? He was like, nope. <laughs> He's like, adds nothing. Doesn't make it any better. Yeah, no. I like I've had I've had Canadians. Here's the problem, Duncan. Mm. Is sneaky Canadians will stand oh, up for this. Series. Canada. Yeah. Our our hail and sneaky land. That's here's what they do. Is first of all, they give you the tragically hip and you like you go, you guys are pretty cool. This is a mm-hmm. good band. And then, then Duncan, they slip a little Justin Bieber on you. That's yep. what Canada does. Yep, the Biebs. The Yes, the Biebs. Thank yeah. you, Duncan. I mean, um, I, 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 mean I, I like to consider myself a part-time believer. Um, so. I'm a part-time lover, Bieber, personally. Bieber, Bieber, ooh. <laughs> That's been Duncan and Bo slash fiction for this week. <laughs> It's been Duncan and Bo forever. Yeah. Uh, I'm switching my mic off. I'm just leaving the chair spinning. <laughs> right, right. It's a, it, yeah, a real, like, car door slam. Drive off. Um, like, it's like that famous Henry Rollins uh, skit where he's talking about, he's like, you know, I, 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 I like living myself. I don't like romance. I try and not do romance. He's like, but, you know, every now and again, you have to get yourself out there, be vulnerable. And he's like, and I hate these guys, but I'm one of those guys that, you know, what's your top five? This, what's your top five? That he goes, and you'll be out on a, a nice date and everything's going really well. And you know, you shouldn't ask and you're driving and you, you're fighting the urge to it. And then you'll just say, what's your top five recording artists? And she'll say, you know, I've, I've really been liking that new Nickelback. And I'll go, Aah! get the fuck out of my car. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, let me tell you how delighted I am that uh, a Rollins reference has happened this early in the show. Mm-hmm. That's a good sign, as far it as is. I'm concerned. Yeah, that is things can only go up from here. That's that's good luck in Scandinavia. <laughs> if you mention Henry Rollins in the first fifteen minutes of a conversation, then luck follows you all day, Duncan. I like that. Let's stick with that. Let's so, stick with that. Sounds good. So, uh, what was I saying? How did we get on Rollins? 
I don't remember. A now. slasher taking a week off. Oh, the sneaky Canadians. Yeah. Canadians, so yes. yeah, the sneaky Canadians will tell you. Oh no no no! Like the, yeah, the first season's a little rocky, but it gets a lot better. And I'm like, uh, does it? Literally does no. It? What I've heard. I've heard the other. I've right. heard the other way. I've heard that season one is what some people would consider the high water mark. Yeah. But see, this is what I'm hearing from Canadians, Duncan. That's uh-huh. why it can't be trusted. So. Uh, with their Justin Trudeau's and their <laughs> handsome <laughs> heads of states, um, their their memes, their yeah, their their Saint Bernards with liquor casks. <laughs> Although I'd seen that a dog that carries alcohol. Uh huh. I mean that's that's man's best friend right there. Um, is it that just goofy? Kind of a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, enough. Well, you know how you know how a, a dog that has a vial of alcohol around its neck wakes up in the morning feeling feels rough because um, he's drunk there. Oh God! It's a hangover dog based joke. It's a niche <laughs> market, but if you can just hit it right, yeah, it's the Venn diagram of people <laughs> who like dog jokes, hangover jokes, and this show. Rough. Oh my God. Um. <laughs> Duncan, uh, I I know you don't typically uh, watch or listen to this show, which you can do both of. Uh, and whichever way you're consuming this show, thank you very much. We have some we new, love you. We have some new subscribers. I know that for mm. a fact. So welcome to a show that over time has gotten dumber, uh, yeah, along yeah, with uh, the hosts. <laughs> well, uh, uh, they're they're onto me because currently at the moment I am doing on my Thursday cast screening sessions. I've been uh, we've been working our way through the true detective. So I've, of course, I've gotten some messages about this. I, I it starts when I'm at work, so I haven't been able to join you. But I, yeah. my heart's with you, of course. I've been pointing people in the direction of that, and then it didn't occur to me at the time. But we are coming out of true detective and going straight into Twin Peaks, and of course, I've been telling people they can go through Twin Pe- the Twin Peaks journey with us as well. To which they said, "Are you just like picking things that can be directed back to Duncan and Bo come correct episodes?" And I was like maybe brand synergy that's what i like duncan uh, my plan all along Bo. my plan all along not accidental at all yeah i i appreciate that and uh yeah and i've been thinking a lot about re-watching twin peaks as well i think that's going to happen sooner rather than later i think yeah, i'm maybe well, like a month away from that true detective season three interestingly enough is proving to be a better watch second time round. Hmm. So okay and I'm it was really, really enjoyable yeah. i i know like if you don't say it uh <laughs> when you get to this episode i'll be disappointed but when you see the ultimate fate of steven dorf that is still like <laughs> if that that hits close to home that feels right to me <laughs> and i'm okay with it me me and a kennel of dogs in the backyard just shut up I forgot how great he is in that. He's so show. good, man. Stephen like, Dorff is amazing on, on all that those too. all those timelines um, are just kind of kind of amazing. Um, so and I'd like I teased it because obviously we've been watching seasons almost back to back. We've separated them a month apart, so they're used to episode four being the big action set piece, and of course episode four in season three is. It builds up to what's going to be that standoff at that guy's house, the trash collector's house. Um, you know, the guy that served in Vietnam, the, the you know, uh, uh, kind of Native American guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the one uh, who, like, yeah, it kind of gets framed up for the whole thing. Yeah. Well, remember, he he, 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 he sets the claymore at the door. Yeah. And then the door got like, but that's what the episode finishes at the click. And they're all like, oh, fuck off. And I'm like, that's right. Next week, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. You just got true detectived. Um, <laughs> now you have to go through what me and Bo had to go through a whole week of waiting. That was so much fun. Uh, true Detective season three was a, a real fun mm-hmm. watch. Yeah, um, one of the, me. You know, I know we just finished it, but man, Lovecraft Country was really up there as far Did as just you? like the 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 shows were fun to record and the quality mm-hmm. of the show itself was so good. Yeah, I think they're still trying to sort out moving parts for a potential season two. Um, but it or, seems like yeah. everyone that did anything on that show has just been rightly so given tons of opportunities and money to do stuff. So I'm like super happy. I think I think it's a, a it's exciting to see the names of like the, the key players behind that season, whether it's the talent or the people behind 
um, the adaptation or the, or the film and the, certainly the director um, all now finding this newfound interest and in, from from different studios and different properties. So if we get one like three years from now, I'll be very, very happy. If we don't, I, I mean, I feel like they've missed a step, but it doesn't take away from the fact that that was maybe... It's up there. I, I'm with you. I think it's Duncan, one of the... did you fall down? Do you need do you need medical assistance? <laughs> no, my watch started answering the question that I didn't <laughs> ask it. It does this all the time. It just like it he, hears me like don't ever don't ever think out loud uh, because your your watch will start being. I, I love the fact that you've reached a point in life where you're just like shut up, watch. I'm honestly like it's usually late at night. I'm just like, what is it? Leave me alone. Leave me be. Um, so... Let me rest. Watch. <laughs> Give uh... me an hour. <laughs> Give you an hour. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know how, what you people say. Yeah, that's exactly what we say. <laughs> um, so, we so all right. By arrows. Uh... <laughs> quick, quick point out here. Um, yep. Uh, Derek saying Henry Rollins uh, in chat better than any season of Slasher. Uh, accurate. If he should no be in a season of Slasher. Like, he, that's the yeah. missed opportunity. You get Rollins in, instant credit. Rollins in as the... Ooh, Rollins in as the, the protagonist. Oh. And no, no, no. And then you get Cronenberg in as the antagonist and have them squared off at the end. Oh, that's, could you imagine? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you got a reason for Canada. You do something like that. <laughs> um, and Alan also uh, in chat saying... <laughs> Uh, about slasher oh no it gets worse jaw-droppingly so yeah so yeah, i non-canadian alan Mc mcpherson here chiming in um yeah. <laughs> so good to know anyway duncan what i was saying is i know you don't you don't typically watch or listen to the show uh but uh, we start the show with a little bit of a back and forth a little yes. warm-up if you will where we talk about it's movies we've seen if you if you want uh yes a um, a mono e filmo Oh, <laughs> uh, of of one good, one bad uh, movie that we've watched over the I was course. Using of the rhyme. Movies. No one warned me he was going to be using rhyme. <laughs> oh yeah, you know Doctor Seuss has been on the news a lot lately, and it just yeah, had people... me in the spirit of things. <laughs> some people seem upset about that. Uh... It's anyway. I, yeah. There's no. It's too stupid to go into. Yes. Um. So Duncan, uh, do you want to start? Do you have a one that you you feel fiery about? Um, nothing that I'm particularly fiery about. But then shut up. Some... Uh, the bad for me this week is a movie called The Fourth Kind. So here's what happened, oh, Duncan. No, yeah, no, listen to me. Listen no, to me, Duncan. No, Just calm down. No. <laughs> Just listen. So what happened was I got on a, a weird kick. I think I was talking. I might have been talking to Heather or something, and we, and we were talking about alien abduction movies. Yes. And I was like, you know what? It's been a while since I watched Dark Skies. Oh no! So listen, so I watched Dark Skies, and I was like, you know what? That's all right. I kind of like Dark Skies. It's got a real grim vibe to it that I kind of dig. <laughs> and so then I backed it up with the fourth kind because I was like, I remember the end of the fourth kind kind of rocking. So let me watch this movie again. Uh, the end isn't great, but the movie's good. I I forgot all about the hi. I'm Mia Jovovich. <laughs> You forget about welcome, well, welcome <laughs> to the fourth no. kind. I was like, "What? Oh shit! I forgot all about this. This is dumb as shit." So you forget about it. I... <laughs> it was in all the marketing. It was the trailer. It's it, all of the movie. A lot of movies under that bridge, Duncan. I watch like I average at least a movie a day. So yeah, sometimes details get fuzzy. Go fuck I was yourself. Thinking, how, how many movies have used that technique though? One, the fourth kind. So right. I mean, it's like it's, it's it's different because it's different. But I blocked it out, Duncan. Is the point that I I made myself forget? Much like it, I was like, huh? Yeah, where are there owls at the beginning of that movie? No, it's not an owl. People. Oh no, it's them talking straight to the camera in a really stupid way. So <laughs> anyway, so I had kind of a rough time with the fourth kind, but I came back uh, around to uh, dark skies. See, I'm not a fan of Dark Skies. I, and I, 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 like I quite like the fourth kind. Um, I think the fourth kind, what I like about it is it understands right at the start, right, we're going to do this kind of full documentary, found footage 
mockumentary. Well, yeah. I'm not even a mockumentary. But We're gonna both do parts that. of it are fake. That's the part but, of it that, but, but like, but that's, but that's clearly yeah, but that's, so. Yeah, but what I like about it is that they're like that. We want to put named actors and actresses in this. So what we're just going to do is do it under the guise of a recreation. And I I prefer that, actually. I, I, I prefer the honesty of it. It's like, we want Mila Jovic to be in this movie. So in, in order to do that... Um, we either like get her husband to direct it. Yes. You, uh, yeah. Or... <laughs> or we see up front... And she'll be kick-ass. She'll kick those aliens' butts. The, 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 I, I, the, there was a part of me that never for a second fully believed in it because once again you've got footage like that and the internet people know about it uh for it to suddenly appear as a film it's like ah, that's not right um but at the same time though i no i, I quite i quite dig the, sco- the stories behind that i quite i quite enjoyed that one uh, uh yeah it it, it really is dumb though it's a dumb premise i'll yeah. give you that it's a dumb but at least he tried to do something different regardless whether or not it works for you they didn't go down the same we're just going to try and play it that Amelia Yolovich was actually kidnapped by this actress that looks surprisingly like her. It uh, was kidnapped by aliens. It is a real movie, and believe it. So. And and that's another thing that kind of threw me on the rewatch of the fourth kind is I think the the actress who who is playing the the uh, therapist that the movie is based on, or like yeah. the, the fake real therapist. I don't yeah. think she's all that great. No, and she's and not supposed to be an actress, Bo. I I know, but it. <laughs> You know, it's it's the Rex syndrome where that yes. movie convinces me that all those people are exactly who they say they are in that yeah. movie. Yeah. And in the fourth kind, there is never a point where I'm like, that's not that's always an actor. In, it's in late Rex. mungo. It's what you do is you do late mungo. Right. Everyone late yes. mungo feels like the real person. Yes. Like, like when they're like, I'm I'm a, a DJ psychiatrist. Like that guy feels like a DJ psychiatrist. That's what yeah. you do. You don't cast it based on looks or names or whatever you cast it based on can they play that part yeah you know can they ad lib like most of the late mungo is ad libbed um and you i think that's what gives it authenticity i think when you've got a hollow husk shell of a woman who's been abducted sitting there kind of all gaunt and pale face and shit i think that's where it maybe doesn't they've got my daughter (laughs) i just want her back Oh dear, you're a cruel, <laughs> cruel man. You're a cruel, cruel man. And I know I had three cucumbers, but now there's only one. I tried a cucumber test with my cat, <laughs> but an alien abducted it. That would be the fun. Like- that would be the funniest thing in the world if you t- if there was footage of her trying the cucumber test with a cat and then the cat started doing the yeah, right. like, yeah. <laughs> the abduction face would be amazing. <laughs> uh, the fjord kind. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's real stupid, but uh, <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we could get. Like it again. I feel very optimistic about this episode as a whole because we've had a couple of really dumb ideas already, and I, that's encouraging to me. So, uh, what was your give me give me one of your good or bad? Right. So I'll swing into my my bad. So and then so in between um, between us recording, I did Glasgow Freight Fest digitally this year. So it was a, a kind of much stripped back affair. It was still a two day event, but it was only six movies. Uh, digitally curated by them and surprisingly this time around I mean there's always stuff that's predominantly in the horror genre but there's always stuff that's slightly adjacent this time around there was a lot of stuff that was adjacent it was maybe realistically you could say there was one true horror movie out of the six a couple of very you know very that's like close... 16% of, of the horror film festival being horror movies yeah, like uh, flat, f- as in as in flat out unabashedly, this is a horror movie because it dealt with kind of exorcisms and shit like that. So that's one hundred percent, you know, horror movie. Then there was some stuff about like serial killer. There was a serial killer sort of movie, but it was handled in a kind of dra- kind of dramatic sort of way. So I'm like, what well, serial killers? It's still very, very violent. So I'd probably put that in there. Um, there was a movie called Vicious Fun, which I would highly recommend everyone check it when you get your hands on it. it is very, 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 very fun. Um, but the, the the movie which left me kind of like 
I, I don't I don't organise a festival, Bo, but I'd like to think that if I did, I would have a good finger on the pulse for quality um, and just filmmaking in general. And it's why I was surprised that this movie called American Badger made its way through. Yeah, that's the name of the movie. Is it is uh, it about a badger? Now, if it had to been, it would have been amazing. But um, no, this is about a hitman. So imagine, imagine Luc Besson had a massive stroke and then decided to make a movie. That would be American Badger. Um, it's about a hitman who is nicknamed Badger. Okay, that, uh, follow, that tracks. I'm on board. The, the reason he's nicknamed Badger is because he is a kind of lonesome sort of creature, uh, fairly hostile, and apparently badgers are that. In fact, the American badger is widely known, and I didn't know this, uh, as probably, you know, the most, like, lonesome, like, lone wolf fucking, <clears throat> like, nasty piece of work out there. And I was like, are they get maybe honey badger? Probably American badger? Maybe. That's, that's how good the American badger is. It hired PR yeah. to be like, <laughs> fuck those honey badger motherfuckers. And ran a smear campaign to get the <laughs> heat off them. Make me a film. Um, it's just a room full of badgers arguing. Make me a film. Um, but yeah, so it's it's this is basically it's a kind of famous stuntman choreographer in real life that's behind this project who plays the main role. Um, all I'm going to say is sometimes choreographers are choreographers because you know how they see people that can't do teach. <laughs> Um, he's not an actor. He's a terrible actor. He also wrote the movie, and the dialogue is fucking awful. But it's, basically, he's a hitman. Like a Neil Breen film. Oh, dude, like this. Oh, he is. He himself is this hitman, and he's known as being like uh, he's good at his job, but he, he leaves a mess behind him. Not like what hitman hitmen are supposed to do, leave a trace. He tends to leave a big fucking trace every time he takes this job. So he's got a job to essentially get this, befriend a woman, get information out of her, and then kill her. Um, and of course, you can already see where things are going. He befriends her and falls in love. Um, they always and then do. They always do, even though at the beginning, up front, he says that the reason they call him the Badger is that he can't coexist with anyone. Within five minutes, he's met a woman that he falls in love with. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, this is the Nightmare on Elm Street remake syndrome for me. Of like when uh, the the Nancy in that movie is like, I don't know if you know, but I'm not exactly popular. Meanwhile, everyone is showing up to ask how she's doing. Yeah, it's, like, it's just anyway. like stupid shit. Just right, like stupid your, shit. Your, your characters didn't read the script. Yes, yeah. but, but in, in the case of this one, he actually wrote the script. And chose the leading role. So he wrote himself into this part that he doesn't fall through. The audio in it, because a lot of it's him narrating his own life. Mm -hmm. you know, when I came back from the war, you know, all this pish. Yeah. Uh, but the audio is terrible. It's all distorted and shit. So the set, he's clearly d didn't employ This it. sounds he's, amazing, Duncan. No, it's it's not even a good, bad movie uh -oh. because there's not, for, for that to work, certain L, all of it should be bad. And the sad thing about it is he's actually a really good fight choreographer. So the fight scenes out with the, you know, fake gunshots, of which there are many, um, the fighting scenes are actually done surprisingly well. So he, he, he clearly, that's his bag, and he should just stick to it. But what's brilliant about it is if you actually go on and check his IMDb, this is, I think, his third movie he's directed, and all of them are about sex workers, which is starting to make me think that... He either has an inside track somewhere, <laughs> he has some inside knowledge that he's pumping for information, literally and figuratively, um, or I get it. He just I has one idea. He likes his one idea, and he's just going to keep revisiting it. It's awful. It's actually like an awful movie. It's far too long, and it, there's not enough fighting in it. Like this is like a, an hour and a half movie, and I think there's four fight scenes in it. I'm like, that's what you do. <laughs> like, you right. It, yes. If you're going to be a fight choreographer that does a movie, make sure there's lots and lots of fight choreography in your yeah. movie. So what I was thinking is what if he'd approached it the same way they did that movie Hardcore Henry, which is basically one POV like video game essentially um, of fight sequences and and whatnot. If he'd approached it like that, I actually think even with the bad dialogue and stuff, it would have worked out well. But there's just a lot of them lying in bed shirtless with his weird shaped nipples, um, talking about how 
his, his life's hard. Can I um, uh, ask a follow up? Yes. How how are his nipples weirdly shaped? Um, they are less circular and more kind of like teardrop shaped and stretched out. <laughs> All right, I like they're, seeing the hand motions. <laughs> they're weirdly shaped. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. Uh, they're, carry they're on. Like a pair of suspicious cartoon cat eyes. Um, <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just not right. Cat eye um, nipples are so in fashion right now, Duncan. <laughs> I don't know if you pay attention to these things. Maybe you're not a fashionista like like I'm. I, I try and avoid it, Bo, um, because I've been burned one too many times. On on <laughs> nipple fashion? It happens. Yeah, no, it happens. Yeah. It changes so fast. Such, you walk yeah. into a room and somebody's like, oh, he's got last year's nipples. Last year's nipples. <laughs> disgusting yeah uh, you don't want to ever be you know you don't want to go from the the it guy to the has been in three seconds and that's what nipple fashion will do to you what uh, what have so. your nipples done for me lately that's the question you have to ask yourself <laughs> so that's that's my bad it, okay it was it was it was bad yeah, um that sounds but really even terrible by, even by Fright Fest standards, it was a it was a bad movie. And they always have like one bad movie on the festival, but I kind of thought, you know, you're going from 13 features down to six. That means the quality. You just chop out the bad movie. And it was like, no, we need to keep it in. I don't know why. Yeah, we look, we got some some time to fill. Yes. Um, and they, yeah. So uh, but yeah, some of the other movies, Vicious Fun, definitely want to keep your eyes out for Run Hide Fight, which was a movie I was messaging about at the time, which is basically die hard. In a high school, uh, during a high school shooting. Um, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I've I've heard a couple of people now say that that movie is just a good time. It's just, uh, yeah. I mean, if you if you can devoid yourself from the fact that the subject matter is a bit uh, risky, it is, you know, it is fun. And Thomas Jane is basically playing the same role that he did in Money Plane, which is kind of amazing. Um, like, like, he's just the same guy. In fact, I, I think he's in the same outfit. I think he's maybe... He's maybe the shooting, same day. <laughs> maybe shooting on you. You get five minutes with Jane on this movie and then five minutes with Jane on this movie. Um, so it, it was... But, uh, yeah, Vicious uh, vicious Fun. And um, Out of the World, uh, which is a French movie, which has kind of got... It's kind of got maniac sort of vibes. It's kind of like... It's about... Uh, essentially a french serial killer um and i thought that was really 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 good so um so yeah keep your eyes open for those ones avoid american badger um and yeah i think that's really all uh, all i have uh, on that but i do have goods so when you swing around to me i will i will i will bring in the goods yeah i haven't forgotten um <laughs> I don't know so i mean un- uh unnecessarily aggressive uh this early in the morning <laughs> It's daylight savings. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, so uh, before we launch into the good folks, uh, I will say if you uh, have any questions for our Ask Duncan and Bo uh, section, which immediately follows this segment, uh, throw them into the chat. Uh, now is the time to do that, and I will curate as needed. Uh, but place them nicely into the chat. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, place them gently yes. as you would a, a piece of fine china. Ooh, China. China. Uh, uh, so my good Duncan is a a movie called Sound of Metal. Oh, right. uh, it, which is a an uh, Amazon Amazon released it here on their service. I think they produced the film. In fact, I, I'm reasonably sure of that. And yep. it's uh, Riz Ahmed is getting a ton of awards for his performance in the movie. The movie is all about a dude who is a uh, touring heavy metal drummer um has a band with his girlfriend they kind of uh travel around in an airstream and you know gig and that kind of shit and very very quickly he loses his hearing and uh the movie is sort of about him coming to terms with the fact that like he has suffered this sort of personal calamity that makes his entire like it changes the trajectory of his whole life you know Mm. And it's it's really well acted. It's it's one of those movies that could be like really saccharine and um, just very Hollywood, you know? Yeah. Where it's like, well, he's going to learn that the power of, you know, acceptance is inside him all along and shit like that. And it doesn't do that, which is really nice. And in fact, it it it's a movie that does a great job 
of never coming out and telling you what the characters are feeling. Mm-hmm. Like nobody is ever like, I I feel like this. It's just it's all done through good performance and really subtle dialogue and it's filled with really interesting characters and um it's optimistic but it's also kind of tragic i mean it's it's just uh, one of those movies that comes along you know every you get a handful of them every year that's like you know if this one best picture i'm totally fine with that you know mm-hmm. like nomadland is kind of my personal favorite this year but boy uh you know sound of metal is is super strong and a great journey as a film you know so Sounds good. it's it it's classy, Duncan. It's the kind of movie you could take your family to. It's a it's a classy award picture. It's not like your fright fests, or your murder festivals, or what have you. It's a classy Oscar picture. Murder fest. Mm, I, a that, movie. Y- wait, there was a blood fest, and was it murder fest the other one? No, I think blood fest was the was the bad movie I'm thinking about, which there, had all the the killers. Yeah, but there was another one that was Hellfest. Was the other Hellfest? One. Hellfest was, other was one. actually kind of good. It was like a really scrappy little low budget kind of endeavor, and the yeah. blood fest was the one that got released to the theaters. That was kind of a. A, a real disappointment Oof, um yeah anyway enough of Bloodfest versus hellfest here on duncan and bo come correct that's our side podcast duncan and bo versus fests yes that's right but we'll uh take them on. <laughs> what is uh what is your good though so my good one um i don't know if it's available in the states it's just come out in the uk uh this is one that did play at fright fest last year uh, so coming back to my fists uh, but played at the London one which I didn't attend uh, even though it was digital I did not attend um, this one is called The Columnist and it is a, a Danish movie and it is a kind of dark comedy dark well dark horror comedy but it's the sort of dark horror comedy that made me smile a lot uh, it is about a columnist funnily enough who writes a lot of kind of fluff pieces for um for whatever publication she works for it's always the 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 kind of twee tacky story that appears in there never the hard-hitting right. journalist that, that that kind of like cat cat gets stuck in tree kind of bullshit. yeah that yeah. sort of shit um and she is the brunt of a lot of essentially internet abuse like whenever she logs into her socials of people tweeting about her seeing the stuff that you would expect from people to say about particularly women online, um, you know, the, the century, just negative, horrible, repugnant, fucking vile shit. But of course, it's all posted without any, well, it's all posted in anonymity and all posted without any r- repercussions, except she manages to find a way to track down the people that are posting things. And at first, she finds it that it's her next door neighbor who she doesn't really like, and um, she finds her next-door neighbour while he's trying to do work on his roof, kind of stuck outside asking for help, and she just kind of just pushes him off. <laughs> just, just, and then all of a sudden she realises she has unlocked something in her brain that allows her to write some pretty powerful shit. So then she just decides to, everyone that writes something bad about her, she's going to track down and murder them. Um, and it is very, very, very funny, very prescient, very witty, very clever. Uh, she's got a boyfriend who's this horror shock novelist who, uh, like in real life, it's kind of like the, the Wayne's World Alice Cooper scene. Oh, really okay, lucky, gotcha. You know, where uh, like he looks like, he looks like Bram Stoker, like he's like fucking all goth and shit. And you, he writes these shocking novels, but the like, next scene you'll see him cooking eggs in the kitchen. <laughs> just like totally docile and domesticated um yeah it's, it's, it's a, a switch your brain off it's not trying to thunder down the point that you know that the internet can be a rough place and think about what you're posting before you post it because there's someone on the other side reading it um and there is that like kind of monologue towards the end where it feels like it's going that way but actually in doing what she's doing, she's actually defeating the purpose of what she's trying. It's, it's, it's very well done out, but Denmark doesn't have a ton of great horror movies. 
in the last like 10 years. It's something that they don't necessarily do. They have a great kind of history of um, kind of silent horror movies, uh, like movies like um, uh, Vampire, for example. You know, that came from there, like kind of revolutionized the way uh, people filmed horror, specifically moving towards like German expressionism. So they, they, they had this kind of, it looked like they were going to have like a great lineage of it and they just stopped doing it. They do a lot of gritty thrillers, not necessarily horror movies. So to see this, it definitely feels like them trying something different. The budget is there. The gore effects are brilliant. It's very, very fun, very way. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for a horror movie when it comes out, hopefully it won't be long before it's over there or it may already be over there for all I know. Um, well, you know, if you're looking for something, you can switch your brain off, get some popcorn and have a laugh and watch people be essentially butchered for saying pretty horrible shit online, which let's be honest, we've all wish we could do. Um, then it's the movie for you, The Calmnest. And that sounds very much like an exaggerated version of the last like three minutes of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> It is. It's the same idea when they yeah. show up at the door. It's pretty much that. It's just like, like so much. How many like, people want to kick some ass playing? <laughs> it's, it's that. It's, it's sort of it's taken on that. But there's all bit. There's there's lots. There's nice little details in there. You know the fact that she's a woman in a predominantly male orientated thing. The the abuse that she gets given to her doesn't get passed on to her male colleagues. You know it's it's all aimed at her. Um, and so, so you're you're kind of you're kind of following her through that, and even down to the bit where she kind of tries to go cold turkey from social media, which uh, once again we've all done at some point, and how you just end up looking at your phone and nah, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to, I just I'm not going to, and then before you know it, wait 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 wait, dislike dislike, um, must post on this, must see this, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's it's very 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 well done uh, and a ton of fun. So if you're looking for a, for a, a dark comedy, uh, it's one for you. And hopefully it should be. I mean, it's just out over here um, officially. So I would imagine this year for the states if it isn't already. I will uh, I will keep an eye out for it for sure. That does sound fun. Mm. I think uh, what's immediately ahead of me is a rewatch of uh, the Sacrament. Oh, nice. Um. Yeah, I'm doing the, uh, a VD clinic pretty soon that is uh, all about Jonestown. Once a year, I'm allowed on that show uh, <laughs> when they're like, hey, we want to talk about a serial killer. Yeah. And so they bring me on for that. And uh, so this year we're talking about Jim Jones mm -hmm. and read the book uh, The Road to Jonestown. Oh, it's a good book. It's a fantastic book. Good book. Uh, good book. Really interesting. Um, as I've said a number of times, the fact that Jim Jones once sold spider monkeys door to door is one of the greatest things that is true to to ever happen. Um, at, but at any rate, so I'm, I'm going to watch that pretty soon. I'm kind of excited because I've only seen it the one time. And I remember at the time not being disappointed, but feeling like I'd been duped a little bit because there was like, like, no, 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 this is not Jonestown. This is a fictional account of a, you know whatever and then you see it and you're like this is fucking jonestown why do why even front about this yeah i think uh, that i once i got over that because i think that was a that was a big issue with me the first watch and then on the second watch i knew exactly what i had actually i think it's it's a shame that things panned out the way they did for ty west too by the way he's coming back to do an e24 horror movie so i'm not going to cry too much about it uh you know what i mean he went off and did some other shit and now he's coming back to horror but that movie, I think, didn't do his career, but it certainly put uh, the brakes on it um, a yeah. little bit. And I never, I never understood because, regardless of whether if I, that's what horror movies do. Like I, I can't, I, I've lost count of the amount of Italian horror movies that I've seen, kind of post the two years of Jones time, which involve. Like, it's, it's a cannibal movie, but wait a second, there's a Jim Jones fella with all these tribes out in there. Like, it's literally, like, they, he's been ripped off so many times in other capacities that it is the egregious part where they basically said this is not based on a true story. And if so, why why is that upsetting when, or, like, aggravating when most horror movies say based on a true story, and they're clearly not? Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a reversal of that, and I think once once I got that into my head, I was like, ah, it, it's got good performances in it, and when it needs to get gnarly, that movie gets gnarly in a way that, you know, 
in a way which is quite upsetting <laughs> it's not not the real thing listen to the jones tapes if you never want to sleep again for a week um, man i'm t- yeah that that's oh, the God. the problem with having done like the deep dive on jonestown it's like man that 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 whole scene was way more horrifying yeah than you you imagine yeah you know yeah. like the 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 sort of environmental effects yeah of a mass murder like that is oh yeah. man it just like i don't think i don't think any filmmaker would ever be able to conjure up because i don't think we can stretch our imagination to begin to depict what actually happened if you know what i mean like yeah. if you listen to the, the tapes are so harrowing and so horrific that to try and get your head in the mind space of crafting a visual to accompany that i just think our brains break when we try and do that so All- also the thing that was like i i don't ever want to see someone try to depict this i I don't think is and you know listeners and viewers uh warning this is disgusting but uh, when they talk about how by the time the like uh gfd the guyanese soldiers made it into jonestown through the jungle expecting to meet resistance to to basically find themselves in the middle of a firefight Mm -hmm. that by the time they got there because it is the jungle and hot all the time decomposition like rapid decomposition had already started yeah and that already uh some of the bodies were described as having burst open oh yeah because of the heat and humidity and everything and it was like holy shit what a fucking nightmare that must have been to walk into a sea of just melting viscera around yeah, it's you. Like, uh, when you uh, sign up to be a soldier do you sign up for that like you know what yeah. like like that's the thing that always gets me like that's why i'd like i i i know for a fact there's certain professions i could never do um and that is one of them even if i was like fit and healthy uh it's something I can do because I just my brain just wouldn't be able to handle it. There's a reason I watch horror movies. Mm-hmm. It's for the escape, escapism through that medium. I don't want it in real life. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. Ooh, heavy, heavy subject. Man. See, we've now changed the tone. We were kind of going goofy. Yeah. Uh, and that was going to aid us and then we went serious, which means we need to do something goofy. Before okay. We get so uh, no, no direct questions, although I'm going to hit a couple of comments here. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me make sure that yes okay i did i didn't lie there there are no questions that rolled in um but uh so somebody saying that they they were tempted to watch sound of metal but haven't seen it yet but it was recently picked up by a criterion Oof. and i was like oh yeah okay that makes total sense that ought to be a criterion release mm-hmm. um Real good movie. You ought, to, you ought to watch that. And then Alan, of course, saying, uh, I wish the sacrament launched a whole series of vice reporters getting killed. <laughs> Which, you know. I, I would... All right. I was, I, 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 vice, I, isn't, vice isn't a thing over here, yeah. Percy. So I, I, I don't know the, the full extent of what they do, but their involvement... Like I mean, Vice are behind uh, Lords of Chaos, and that's a fucking great movie. So... Um, there, yeah. it's very like hey we're gonna we're gonna go out of our way to put ourselves in a dangerous situation sometimes yeah. which yeah. is you know you're you're getting some visuals and some storytelling that you're not going to get anywhere else but also but there is a, a sensational <laughs> aspect to it yeah. that there's, feels there's a, a little it, yeah it feels just slightly muckraking even though mm. it's it, like it's not making shit up but if yeah. anyway uh so uh, the one question from very early on that I will I will throw out to you uh, was the choice of socks you chose today a difficult one to make, and um, we'll take all comers. <laughs> uh, the the socks that I'm wearing today, uh, if you give me two seconds, just for the uh, you can only get this on the video. Uh, the yeah. socks that I'm wearing today are Pennywise the Clown socks. <laughs> oh well, <laughs> but to, to that's much more exciting than the socks I have on. Uh, what so, uh, was that your difficult? question? What, were they difficult to get on? No, they're just very difficult to match with any other outfit I wear <laughs> because of the colour of them. They're insanely coloured. So, yeah, anything I wear, and it's just like, socks! I, I like that it's classic Pennywise, not not your uh, new it Pennywise. Yeah, I, I, I went old school today. Yeah. Well, sure, so, when, you, when you're picking uh, foot coverings, yeah. you, you want to <laughs> keep it classic. Um, the hook, the hook, the hook. <laughs> kiss me fat boy it's oh this is the best uh, yeah. uh, so 
I, uh, I, 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 my sock choice is always the same. I have white, white tube socks. I wear all the the time. That's what I, I wear. It is the most boring shit ever. It is. It is a thing I never think about what socks to wear. I, I look. I got plenty of other ways to accessorize. If if somebody other ways to express myself. Yeah. If if somebody's down to my socks, then I have lost, Duncan. I have. <laughs> That is the I, that's a the last line of defense. That is no line of defense. If you are if you are not interested by socks, I got nothing for you. Yeah. Dainty, dainty and colorful socks aren't going to win you over. <laughs> that's how that works, right? Is when people like you or don't like when they're pe- they're judging you, Duncan. They're just like, ah, I don't think so. What? Let me see your shirt. And, yeah. No. All right. What's your underwear look like? <laughs> uh no let me see your socks oh shit just plain white it's, it's, I, i'm afraid like, we can't be together it's like that um it's like that amazing old old billy Connolly joke where he's he, he's like he never quite un- understood about your parents you know are you, are you wearing clean underwear you, like before you go out somewhere as if you know like, like there's one day that you know <laughs> your son gets hit by a bus and you have to go in and speak to the doctor and it's like, oh, well, listen here, Mrs. Connolly, it, it was a terrible, terrible accident. You're, you, you know, your son was pretty badly hung up. Incidentally, his fucking underwear was a disgrace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as, as Connolly finishes off saying, you would be too if you saw a big fucking bus coming towards you. <laughs> right. I think I I think I remember that joke actually. Uh, oh, speaking of a disgrace, Duncan. Yes. Let us turn our attention to Slasher. <laughs> we have reached episode six. So uh, back in episode five, in those salad days, Duncan, um, we, we had uh, the title of the episode was just "Ill-gotten gains." That makes mm-hmm. sense. That's nice. it was yeah yeah it was ni- it was nice. It rolled off the tongue. It was less biblical. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> what we get out of this guy, uh, episode six, the one who sows his own flesh. Ugh, again, again with this. It sounds like bad pinhead poetry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Volume one. Hi. Oh, hello. Dust I look upon a dusty rose and bloom in summer shade. I spear it with my hook and dead it lies upon the pave. <laughs> Very well done. Yes. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I, this is my uh, mandatory appearance for a season of a TV show. I bid you farewell. I let you. I, I feel like he's been here before this season, though. Isn't I it? have overstayed my welcome. I have made two appearances, and I have only been paid for one. I will speak to my agent immediately. <laughs> yeah, we're not doubling up on that. We ain't got two Hellraiser appearance money on this well, show. What do you mean I'm only being paid for one, Steve? Do not make me open the box and take you to the Leviathan. Well, look at you! If they open the box and you come, I can't. I can't make them pay for that. Uh, there's a loophole somewhere in my contract. We must fix this now immediately. <laughs> my hell contract is a disaster. <laughs> and I where is my rider, Steve? <laughs> I asked for dangling hooks with bits of flesh. There's not even dangling hooks, much less bits of flesh. I require a, ba- a brandy glass full of brown peanut M&Ms, and there was not one given. There were the blue biscuit kind. <laughs> I can't stand it, Steve. I can't work in these conditions. <laughs> what fresh hell is this? I have been to hell. I am the prince of hell, and this is a whole new hell. Oh. I left there to get away from this kind of thing, Steve. <laughs> so, episode... I someone opening the box and pinheads on, like, vacation and you open the box and they get... <laughs> Hello, this is Pinhead. I'm away on vacation for three weeks. Please, please put the box down and return in two weeks' time and open it, at which time I will answer your call with pain and hell. If this is an, a hell emergency, you can call Faust. <laughs> Butterball is unavailable as well. He is scuba diving off the coast of Costa Rica. 
Very, very difficult folk. He's quite buoyant. <laughs> the Chatterer has entered a world pie-eating competition. It's... It will be very messy. <laughs> it feels unfair. <laughs> so much indeed. Uh... <laughs> he stacks the deck. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh, is this thing still recording? I better go. Hasta la vista, baby. <clears throat> so, episode six. Yes, episode six. A and yes. and Ariel Peterson, who you may remember as the young woman, what uh, <laughs> what has been kidnapped and held hostage by Chief Brimley. Yeah, the the one woman who became, which it looked like was maybe a side story arc, which all of a sudden after episode three has become, well, I actually only really started to surface in episode three, and now it's a prominent story arc. Like, yes. the executioner has now taken a backseat to this story. He's like, you know, guys, you know, I'm going to take a little break. I've been doing a lot of work, been killing a lot of people, doing righteous kills, both, you know, in the terms of biblical and also tubular uh, and i'm gonna take some time out and you just run with this story and it's a fl we're getting a flash back ball yeah to five years ago yeah and it, it's the night she goes missing which we've examined in some detail uh with the whole story of june and trent and all that yep. stuff and so uh we see the moment where she's arguing with somebody on the phone like a boyfriend or something at a party and uh the the emt vehicle the ambulance is what they're called duncan uh yes. it, it pulls up beside <laughs> hey, the 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 body fixie truck uh, ambulance is what they're called over here bull yeah. So, yeah you people have a different word for everything um it pulls up beside ariel who is vomiting on account of drinking so much and trent has the line like she's yawning what what was it yawning rainbow chunks yes and i was like oh, that's a new one on me that must be a canadian thing like here in america it's like you know puking yakking vomiting you know some of that like what what's uh, what are the the big <laughs> scottish ones the the kind of slang term for throwing up through either alcohol or drug use is whiteying whiteying yeah whiteying all right uh yeah. for so, named after the uh famous album whitey ford sings the blues i think it's more because the the content that tends to come out is usually for me and white <laughs> so... oh okay i got i got you wow that is specific <laughs> i think that's what i think that's more what it actually is rather than anything else uh like cheap, like cheap cheap alcohol in the uk tends to be um like cider based like really you can buy really cheap nasty cider over here which teenagers will drink because mm -hmm. it doesn't cost a lot of money but when you vom it is just a spew of fucking white foam it's pretty horrible and <laughs> like gold bloom in the flood <laughs> oh, oh that's <laughs> disgusting isn't it it's pretty much it's pretty much that that's what it looks like it's pretty horrible uh but that's that's the, where the, the term goes but yeah it's mostly throwing up puking vomiting vomiting you know vomiting yeah stuff uh, like that so it's not it's not it's not like <laughs> whatever you, about rainbow tr chunks i don't know that's a very specifically weird thing to say and also it made me like thankful that trent's no longer a character in this show yeah so that, like, yeah, train. But well, you know what pissed me off here? I was like, oh, cool, we're going to follow them and find out why Jin died. Because remember, the executioner already got retribution on Trent for this. So and we never got a full explanation as to what Jin did wrong. If anything, Jin's the one that says, maybe we should take her in. Like, she's the one that, like, he's the one that's written all this off. She's the one that's like, maybe we should take her in. And we know that her sin might have been maybe because she didn't come forward with the information. Maybe um but maybe, it's never, he's never yeah they're never especially you know filled it out and then you know what i love about this boulder like now we have to tell you how the chief how chief brimley managed to kidnap her and to be honest i kind of already worked this out <laughs> like i didn't need yeah. the flashback i'm like yeah you obviously had the car picked her up to take her for a lift somewhere and kidnapped her but they're like no let's let's take your favorite beloved character who we know that you've grown attached to duncan and Bo, mm -hmm. and now let's make him a fucking nonce. 
So <laughs> what if he is the skeeviest character on the show? How about yeah. that, everybody? <laughs> How do you uh, like them apples? <laughs> yeah. Because it literally was I'm like, you're breaking my heart here, Slasher. You're fucking breaking my heart. Because when he does all these pithy lines later on, that I'm like, that's such a fucking great line. I'm like, yeah, but you fucked a kid. It's like yeah. so so emotionally like desperate at the moment between whether I should still throw my support behind this character or where i should just call him out for what he is all right so minor point of disagreement oh in this scene in particular when uh when trent is like hey babe how about we get out of here so we can bone uh that's so not what he says the only person i want keeping me up all night is you all right right so much more romantic boy you a potato patata and (laughs) and but that's the point where june's like yeah fuck that kid how about we go get busy and yeah yeah, you know but but regardless i mean punishment doesn't fit the crime here i I agree with that but yeah this whole show is testament to overreaction in the punishment right a (laughs) disproportionate response yeah yeah and the best and so but and ariel as they pull off to go bone ariel is like come back don't fuck <laughs> and <laughs> and then chief brimley pulls up like immediately or he's like, hey uh hey how you do i just saw that goddamn ambulance drive off and and uh she's like uh i i don't think i can get in he's like listen i'm off duty i'm not gonna arrest you for being drunk how about you get in the car and nothing creepy will happen, God damn it. And anyway, so she does, and immediately he's like, I bet you got some goddamn boy problems. And, <laughs> and she's like, yeah. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I, listen, I'm going to take you home, but first let's just drive around randomly so you can sober up, God damn it. And uh, wh- while you're sobering up, how about you have a little of that bourbon in the glove box? <laughs> See, I was just thinking the worst thing in the world, or the best thing in the world, would be Wilford Brimley's Agony Ant Section in a teen magazine. <laughs> like, we're, boy trouble. <laughs> Call 0800 Brimley. <laughs> well, like, what's your problem? Uh, uh, the boy won't pay any attention to you. Well, have have you hit him in the fucking face? How about you slap him across the jaw, goddammit? The boyfriend doesn't know anything about commitment. Get him to serve two terms in Korea. <laughs> yeah, it just all turns into stories about him. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, everything's I, always by the time. <laughs> yeah. Boy, I just, I, I don't know. We've been going out for a while. I don't know if we're really ready to think take things to the next level. Take things to the next level. I'll tell you about taking things to the next level. I remember the first time I had killed a goddamn man. I... Talk about kicking it up a notch. First time I got an erection that wouldn't go away, goddammit. <laughs> it's nature's Viagra. <laughs> it's they the call, most dangerous game. <laughs> I, I found out in the CIA they call it a murder boner. And <laughs> it, it will not go away. They, they, hey, I, I, I couldn't call no physician after four hours for this thing. <laughs> it was going nowhere until I had washed the last of the blood off. And, and the, the high, you get a high when you take a life. What were you saying about commitment again? <laughs> so, and then Ariel is just like, you know, you're kind of a hero cop. <laughs> He's like, you're right. I am a goddamn hero. Hey, hey. How does it feel to have my hand on your your young leg? Well, so there's a, there's an insinuation here that he was in love with her mother mm. when they were kids, I think, because he keeps going back to how pretty Connie looked. Yeah. He keeps coming back to that, and then, you know, it, it does, it's the whole kind of, he lifts the armrest up and then puts his hand on her leg, and she's visibly upset by this, as she should be, mm-hmm. and she tries to get out, and then... It basically just forces itself on her, and that's when we pan away. Yeah, welcome to Slasher, everybody. Credits. Yay! Yeah. Happy new episode. And and so we cut to the present day in his fuck bunker that he's built, <laughs> where he's been keeping Ariel, and they now have this love child. Yeah. In the the VC Andrews Memorial fuck bunker in oh, the basement, gosh. and and 
they're lying in bed together in this bunker and Ariel kind of gets up and she's like, I think Jacob needs breakfast. And he's like, well, wait, wait just goddamn minute. We don't, we don't get a lot of time to just lay around together on account of my goddamn wife. So how about <laughs> upstairs, uh, by the way, <laughs> right? So how about you keep your barely out of your teen's ass of your bed with me? <laughs> and when Ariel is like, Hey, how about we just all live together as a big family? And you let me out of this bunker It'll be like you and me and Jacob and Nancy. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Well, he's oh. fine until until she mentions Nancy, and yeah. that's when he gets. And I'm like, really? Is that is that the line that we're drawing here? <laughs> right. Not the kidnapped teen. <laughs> like, there some things we just don't talk about. God damn it! One of them's my wife. You're you're my downstairs wife. She's my upstairs <laughs> wife, and never the twain shall meet. And so. He, as he leaves, he like storms out, he gets real pissed off and storms out, you know, <laughs> how about, how about you enjoy no weird, creepy old man in, in the room with you? How's that <laughs> sit with you? <laughs> Live in a world without Brimley hugs. Yeah. And so he locks her in the room, he takes off and then she pulls out some sort of knife that she stowed away to Shawshank around the door or something. Well, where no, she's I just think she's shocked with it. I think she's sharpening it. Oh, okay. I was like, what are you doing with this? Yeah, I was that like, was are you my, trying that, to carve your way out of this room? The implication that I got from it was whatever the thing was, she was sharpening it on the, on the stone. Um, okay, that makes at least more sense. <laughs> so we cut from that wonderful scene over to Katie and Dylan, who are having a, a good old-fashioned breakfast argument over like <laughs> not katie i'm sorry the actress's name is katie sarah yeah. is her name on the show but she's like oh yeah hi toy i know it's, like it's the best like like what i love about dylan as a character is i fucking hate him right i mm. absolutely hate him but this is the epitome of everything i hate about him uh, you know, like he's, if, I can't remember exactly what the line is, but it's, it's almost like you know, if, you know, if it's too, if, if it's too hot for for Allison, she should have stayed out of the kitchen. <laughs> you know, like it's just this total kind of punny, pithy. I'm so happy that my boss is dead, and now the attention's back on me, sort of thing. And interestingly, like, Sarah calls him out in that, and I am I'm hashtag Team Sarah on this one, which is like you seem to be like enjoying this a little bit too much, and he yeah. instantly turns it on her like. Well, listen, I am the I am the only man out there doing hard work reporting on these crimes, and you're gonna give me this shit at home, Sarah? You're gonna give me this shit? Yeah. How dare you? It's like so. It's that sort of thing. And then, of course, what I love about it is like saying, like Sarah, like ask the question, which Duncan and Bob have been asking almost since the first episode. Where have you been, Dylan? Where have yeah. you been hiding? What have you been up to? To which he does not give her an answer. He does another one of those kind of passive aggressive again. You know, yeah, can't says, believe you're throwing you're this shit on. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe you're throwing this shit on me right now. After all I've been through, my boss just being murdered. You know, I can't believe you're throwing this shit on me. And then he walks out, and I'm like, well, one, he didn't answer the question, but two, you all the like, see if he is revealed to be the killer and not Cam. Mm -hmm. I like, I would be happy with that because the killer is going to die in this show, probably horribly. And that is fitting for him. I want him. I want him gone, Bo. I want him gone. And the fact that he is a guy who has a laundry list of sins and has not been picked off by the executioner thus far makes him a good suspect. Yeah. And and so at the tail end of this, he storms off because that's what every guy in the show does is to leave a scene. They just walk off in a huff. A sitcom. That's what yeah. they do. I've said it before. That's what they do in sitcoms. There's usually some sort of confrontation. Someone leaves end scene, next scene. That is literal to do in every every episode, every scene of this show. And so we we find Dylan next in the newspaper office where he's just moving some boxes around. Where I oh, guess he's this... taking Allison's desk. Yeah, but he's he, he, they say that he's taking Allison's role as owner of the paper. Right. I don't think that's, that's how that's that how you, works. Yeah, you get promoted from editor in chief to owner. That's how it happens. This is not Highlander. You know what I mean? Like, like, like she's been decapitated. I can be only it. one editor. You know, 
you know what I mean? It's literally not how this fucking works. Your job is the same. The paper will pass on to whoever she's left it to in her fucking will. But knowing Slasher's timeline, that decision's probably already been made, ratified in a court of law and passed out um, in a day. But like you literally, you know, he is now in charge. So this is now his paper. He's not only editor-in-chief, but he's owner. Yeah. And I'm like, all oh, right, maybe. And so Lisa Ann Fellow shows up to say, hey, this story is really breaking big. How about uh, <laughs> you let me take you to dinner? And he's like, well, maybe I can make it. I don't know. I'm getting a lot of calls from Good Morning America <laughs> in 60 Minutes and other news places. I think Ira Glass called me. And she's like, oh, well, listen to Fancy Pants over here. Mm. And so we leave these two knuckleheads to go to Sarah now delivering Cam's newspaper to him. Yeah, because Cam can't wait to see Sarah come back and accuse his father of murder. <laughs> and is once again morning drinking. Oh yeah, he's well he's he's supposed to still be on administrative leave, I believe. But... Maybe, but then he shows up uh, it, it, oh, anyway. I know it doesn't make any fucking sense. It doesn't make any sense. And she says Listen, Cam, you're never going to believe it. I learned something new about this Ariel's disappearance. And he's like, what did you learn, Sarah? And she's like, that Marjorie whore. She was lying all along. Yeah, and we're like, Marjorie? Marjorie. Yeah, who's Marjorie again? Marjorie? Have and Marjorie? <laughs> so after her saying, she was lying about everything, they yeah. cut right to Marjorie where she was like, I was not lying about anything. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, let's, like, we have a scene where they go and see her at our skeevy motel where right. she's like sitting wearing the cheapest perfume ever and a dress that is far too low cut for a woman of that age um, and that kind of and like, she's done a lot of drugs for is all I'm saying yes. and she the, the way she quantifies the time is fucking amazing like she basically says that she was outside a bar called The Onion which doesn't sound like the sort of place I'd like to drink which by the way if it couldn't get any more kind of uh, The Onion has a karaoke t- <laughs> two hours uh, just two hours 9.30 to 11.30 it's a hard out Duncan yeah and that's how she knows that that's when she saw Ariel because it was when everyone was getting kicked out of the bar post karaoke the insinuation being that's when she makes some bank if you know what i mean by i don't know making men wank i don't know something something that rhymes is disgusting and it's all to do with semen but that's what she does yeah uh, that, that's her type of shine bo and um that's how she knows and she's very smug with it and what i love about this is sarah it's like like <laughs> Sarah's basically, you know, when I think of that 15-year-old girl going there, this wasted life woman. And all she says is, you know, your mother, <laughs> your mother was a whore, but at least she was like happy. At least she was like a happy person. And then, but like she walks in and encounters her and says, like something like for shame. And I'm like, Sarah literally said that she shouldn't be alive and she's a wasted skin. Mm. And all she said is that her mother was happy being a whore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it, 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 you know, one of my favorite things on this movie is the sick burns and oh yeah, and one oh, I see of, it as expense. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah and well, and yes, amazing. the the one about like you know your mother may have been a, a whore, but at least she was fun is a pretty good yeah. one. <laughs> I I also find it particularly gross to hear Marjorie say, uh, when they're like, "Are you sure it was eleven thirty then?" And she says, "My mouth don't lie, sugar." Yeah, and you're like, oh, uh, uh. Uh, yeah. no. Yeah, mouth like a Dyson vacuum. <laughs> uh, right. Um. Ugh. <laughs> anyway, so outside the motel, Sarah is just like, you know, that whore was lying. And <laughs> Cam is like, listen, I understand that you're upset about all this, but also none of this is your concern. Like, you're yeah. just a, a, a civilian. You know, like, you're just Nancy Drewing all this shit. And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, death is surrounded all the everything that has to do with this Ariel girl. And she's like, if you know, if he's going after all the people that stole this little girl, I'm on the executioner's side then. 
I love it. You're almost kind of going half Jamaican with this Irish accent. It's kind of amazing. It's really good. And you're becoming King Willie from Predator 2, you know, about the one who'll be doing all the killings, I am. Don't worry about it, Duncan. It's fine. The accent is fine. There is nothing to see here. And... <laughs> but Cam immediately pivots into like, hey, I'm sorry I said those mean things about you. And she's like, it's all right. <laughs> well, she, she basically says that she thinks that maybe the executioner is actually doing God's work. Yeah. And then there's that awkward moment of silence where we're like, oh, yeah, I just remembered he murdered your wife, Cam. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> maybe oh. this is the time of place to put my foot in my mouth, Sarah. Jesus. Oh, that's right. He he had June eaten up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh yeah. so meanwhile, Duncan, in the fuck bunker. Yep. In the fuck bunker. <laughs> Ariel yeah. is reading her her kid Jacob uh, a book together. And they're interrupted. All about poodles and dogs. And he's not in there. And the reason he's not into it is because he's never seen a real dog. Yes. And I'm kind of with him on this one. It's like when you're learning about dinosaurs at school, except dinosaurs are cool. If dinosaurs were kind of lame and you were being taught loads of stuff about them, you're like, by the way, this thing you're learning loads about doesn't exist on this planet anymore. I don't know how, be in how interested I'd be to learn about it, if you know what I mean. Like, oh, right. are, are you saying that if dinosaurs weren't inherently cool yes you would not I'm, get give a shit about like the early history of the planet yeah i i, I would say that i wouldn't consider it pivotal uh, pivotal in the the school curriculum i think it would be one of those things that you could learn after school <laughs> all right i mean the like, evolution I, I, like, of I, life on the planet seems significant but whatever <laughs> If it's not cool enough for Duncan, well, let, let me let me just put it this way: scientists still can't still can't exactly tell us how they died. Um, they can speculate, but they can't tell. So it's like it's like a really cool story without an ending. But like they, a, maybe he was the killer, maybe he wasn't the killer. Which right, might be the end of Slasher. Slasher might end up saying, well, maybe it was Cam, but maybe it was Dylan. Let's do our one of our official Duncan and Bo science breaks. Yes. First of all, Duncan, they have actually pretty. Uh, yes, it is still a theory, but it yeah. is within well within reason that what happened to the dinosaurs is what everybody thought along was there was a, a comet or a, a meteor of such size that struck South America that yes. it kicked up dust. It was the fourth of the mass extinctions on the planet. Uh, the I think it's either the second or third was what gave rise to the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. Um. So a lot of that science, yes, at one point it was like, that's what we think. But now it's like, we're pretty fucking sure. So let's not throw too much how, shade. How do, you, how, how do you learn about dinosaurs in school? I, I don't do you, remember. Do you guys learn? Like, because like, I remember I remember being in primary three, which means I would have been, what, nine? And they're like, this is a triceratops. And this is a diplodocus. And this is a pterodactyl. It's spelt with a silent P, though. Um, you know, like, I remember all that shit. And I was just like, these are cool-looking animals. I can't remember at any point of going, this was vital to the evolution of life on this planet. No, the way they hooked us in were, look at these giant fucking bastards. Look at the skeletons we've found. That's cool. What I'm saying is, if they weren't giant fucking bastards and didn't have really cool skeletons that we could see, I would have zero interest at that. At nine years old. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, Duncan, the, the thing that you and I are dealing with is that all the shit that they taught us when we were kids is yes. kind of wrong. It's all redundant yeah. now because, guess what? Science has improved. Yeah. Like, so I'm sitting there, like, I'm, I, I'll have debates with my six-year-old when I'm like that. I think you'll find, honey, that you're wrong. And she's like, no. And I'm like, well, just, we'll, we'll just fucking check on the internet, will we? And I'm like that. The internet is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Everything I learned is right, and everybody else is stupid. Give me uh, a second to break him. My, my primary three school jotter. He uh, is here. See, <laughs> Missy Smith gave me a smiley face and two stars. <laughs> All right, enough dinosaur chat for now. We'll come back. That was to Duncan and Bo's science chat. Yeah, look out uh, for in a future episode. Right, more, more to come. Science uh, chat with Duncan and Bo. Star talk with Duncan and Bo, <laughs> and. And so uh, Chief Brimley busts into this story time with the kid and has kind of a moment about poodle trivia w with his son, Jacob. Uh, who He's like, you know, hey, did you know that 
poodles don't shed that you have to cut their hair? And he's like, no, I, I didn't know that. You're a pretty smart goddamn little boy. <laughs> and then Ariel is like, hey, I'm sorry about bringing Nancy up earlier. But, you know, Jacob's talking about getting outside and you know how he gets. And he's like, listen, I'm putting away the goddamn groceries I brought you. I forgot the goddamn <laughs> fruit roll-ups. And all this talk about him going outside got me upset. And she's like, look, uh, we're never going to tell anybody uh, that, you know, what, what happened down here. And he's like, I know you're not, goddammit. <laughs> and then she pulls the knife on him, Duncan. She she says, like, we're going to die down here. And he, yeah. he obviously, he, he's not listening to her now. He's chinned out. He's just like, I'm going to get some, you, yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> Uh, uh, we're gonna get it wet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, she pulls the knife out on him uh, and then forces him to hand over the keys. Uh, and then, uh, like, she <laughs> brains him with a can of beans. Yeah, which I mean, one, she doesn't happen hard enough, which you know, it, like, doesn't it doesn't it doesn't knock him out, but it gives him enough time to kind of escape. But gave him some free holidays, lights out. <laughs> How'd you like those beans, Brimley? Yeah, um, <laughs> these are a good source of fiber. <laughs> fiber, fiber uppercut. That's a Sagat joke. Um, a Sagat based vegan joke. Yeah, yeah, you can keep that, guys. Solve it. <laughs> she was like, "Hey, do you hear that? Do you hear that song, Chief Brimley? What song is that? The musical fruit, motherfucker, clunk." <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, and so she uh, and this kid make a run for it but uh, the front door is locked so she tries to run upstairs she's silly because she has the only keys she goes out the door and she doesn't close the door behind her and lock it yeah yeah, yeah. which i'm like ariel come on hen this is played over in your head like a hundred million times in the time that you've been stuck down there you visualize this moment the first the rookie mistake is you didn't close the door and lock it yep 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 and <sighs> so she she gets kind of cornered uh heading up the stairs when chief brimley who has come to uh is like hey jacob my, my young son how about you come down here and give your old man a hug god damn it <laughs> And, and so the kid does. He runs down to him. And then <laughs> Chief Brimley is just like, check it out, Jacob. Sleeper hold. <laughs> just literally put some of that fucking reverse naked choke hold uh, <laughs> a la the UFC. And it's, it's kind of looking at you know, I don't want to have to do this, sir. God damn it. Um, <laughs> My <but> God, I... <laughs> he has him in a sleeper hold. <laughs> oh, you Mary. This kid's got a family. <laughs> Come on, ref. Hey, clearly, this is against the rules. Get that boy out of that ring. He's got a goddamn illegal hold on him. Oh, and, no. And, and so, uh, you know, she, Ariel is like, fine, fine. Don't don't hurt well, our he son. He says he's not going to go to jail over this yeah. at all. Like, that's his fear. His fear is jail because he's a police officer, which, yeah. Um, so, like, she has to capitulate. And like this is where we really get the, the we're kind of doubling down on the fact that, you know, if this ever does come out, like the chances are of those two surviving or something. On, and so this is just planting seeds, Bo. Planting seeds for later on. Yeah, because uh, this show is so good at, at the setup. Hey, <laughs> well, I, 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 there... 100% delivers everything that you hope for, which is fucking nothing. Um, <laughs> like, I really, love the fact that. Statement. Nancy, the wife, shows up in this scene for about two seconds where she comes yeah. down the steps and is like, oh, secret downstairs wife and the baby? And yeah. he's he's got the kid in a sleeper hold? Nope, 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 nope. And well, it's, it's kind of that way where if, you, if you're if you out um, like at a restaurant or something and you sit down with your respected partner and then your ex walks in and you're like, oh, yikes. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. don't make eye contact. Uh, it's literally that she's like oh no secret family oh yikes bye and then she goes away in her room and closes the door yeah, <laughs> like, yeah just goes yeah, upstairs yeah, while ariel is like call the police <laughs> did not hear you la 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 <laughs> uh and then over at the police station 
Brimley is ripping Cam a new one for investigating this case. Going fucking raw, and the best thing that happens out of this is when he's like, you know, we went across and talked to her, and he's like, we? Yeah. And it it, it goes straight away. It's not like the Nancy Drew stuff that we're hearing usually. He's like, you're thinking with your dick. Your wife's not been even in the grave a week. And I'm like, yeah, but this is slasher. I'm surprised that time being the way it is in this TV show, Cam isn't married, retired with seven kids and ten grandkids. He's got a new kid. He's been <laughs> married and divorced a couple of times by this <laughs> episode. You know, like, like, got an addiction, you know, did some time in AA, got out of that addiction, um, started a, a, you know, wrote a self-help book, was cured millions, does a fucking talking to her every year like is it, that's how time works in this show but like the insinuation from his point of view and it's smart if you're chief brimley is to basically say listen you're being led around by your dick you're listening too much to her there's nothing in this we've already investigated this what information did she give you and cam's like well she told me the same story she's always told me he's like exactly motherfucker yeah my, my favorite uh chief brimley line in this is the circular <laughs> logic of him being like you should have goddamn called me before you interviewed this witness. And he's uh, Cam says, I, I tried, tried to call you. I You weren't picking up your phone. And he says, well, I would have said no, goddamn it. Yeah, because like, he's, he's thinking to himself, that's right. I don't get any telephone reception in the fuck dungeon. Yeah. Uh, uh, so like the cognitive dissonance you have to have if you're Brimley in this is kind of great. Um, but he's like, intense like the the like he the, the shit is starting to fall apart around him like yeah the, the walls are closing slow, in. yeah it's slowly starting to be tightened around them but yeah. we're still quite a bit let's put it this way he does nothing but accelerate this <laughs> like yes like every step that brimley does pretty much from now on is accelerating his inevitable demise as a character in this show he is a very bad criminal yes yes and all right so let's leave our shitty criminal for a second to go back to uh lisanne fellows who is now at dinner and and kind of buttering up dylan but he's just like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. all right and she's like well, hey is there something going on he's like look i get it you chose allison but she ended up with her head in a fryer, so now you are you want me to help you. And she's like, all right, you're pretty clever. What do you want? And he goes, a book deal. Well, they go to, she's like, I can give you extra money. Is that yeah. what you want? Do you want to be my number one correspondent? Do you actually want to be like permanently in, you know, on my team, on my crew? I can give you all that. And he's like, I, I want a book deal. And she's like, well, actually, I don't do books. He's like, well, bill to the shit. Mm-hmm. You've had four published books, and I know for a fact you didn't write any of those books. But then we get, like, this is like a, a scene from Dallas. Like, I, honestly, it made me laugh so much because the way it comes across. And uh, <laughs> He's like that. Uh, do you want to tell the waiter what you want? Because I know what I want. Sit for my wine malevolently. It's like something from the fucking OC. I was, I was just like, what are we doing here, people? What it's, are we fucking doing here? I mean, you're not wrong, but it's one of the most clever things that, that happens on this show. It's literally the best line of the show, right? It's, it's the, the best line which doesn't involve someone slam dunking on Sarah, right? It's like... Yes. Like, um, right. A caveat, of course. Anytime we say this is the best thing on the show, we are, of course, excluding the number one said, thing. Yeah, which which is, is anything said to Sarah and, yes. and, and jest or in ridicule, which is instantly top tier. But yeah, it's just like such a kind of... He thinks he's the cock of the walk and he's holding all the cards. And once again, I don't know the ins and outs of the the whole way that media works in the States, but I'm thinking to myself, there are other reporters. Yeah. Just get one of your, you are a hotshot in New York. Just get one of your hotshot reporters to fucking come down here and do the investigation. Fine. Cut this guy out. What does he have? He's only been in town a month. What does he have that no that like no hard trained seasoned reporter could be able to get? It is fucking ludicrous. It's just like like that she's fawning over him and all the rest. And of course, the idea of the book deal comes out. But I think we get a telling bit of information here because then when he talks about that, he specifically says not that I'm claiming that Slasher is this clever, but he says you know I want a book deal. It covers you know the thirty years and the murders. And then I'm like ah right, so that's why I was writing to Tom. Yeah. Like from the beginning, he's always had this idea, book deal in the background, which then once again leads credence to is he instigating some of this shit? Is he behind some of this shit? 
in order to get the book that he wanted? You know, what, what, what does this actually mean? Or is he just as two-dimensional as most of the people in Slasher are? Uh, I, you know, a little from column A, a little from column B, probably. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, so at the local penitentiary where Tom is, Sarah Which shows. We get, we get our first shot outside the penitentiary. Yeah, and this ain't in town, bro. Yeah, I was like, "Where is this again?" Because <laughs> so it is rich. a, it, it's a real like, eh, you know, gate sliding close kind of thing. It's like, did she just go to the police station earlier? Like, she gets like there and back quite quickly, and yeah. uh, like we see this thing as 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 like stock footage of some prison somewhere in America somewhere very remote in america though um and i love the fact that like like when when people that are prisoners um are essentially brought to speak to people there's time that it takes to get the paperwork sorted sign in get them arrange them to get out get the cuffs on them walk them along and tom's went through all she's went to the trouble of traveling this far out and he's went to all this trouble filling in the paperwork getting all this stuff checked, going through the usual rigmarole, getting patted down by someone aggressively, maybe a cavity check, I'm not too sure, but it's Tom we're talking about here, and he was a killer. Uh, going through all this shit, right, for Tom to get brought into the room for what merits a 30-second scene, Bo. It's head scratchy. Like, why Sarah shows up to do this is, <laughs> it's nonsense, because you're right, There, there's a ton of pomp and circumstance to practically like outside the frame of of the of the show yeah a lot of stuff that has to happen and sarah shows up to, like when tom gets brought in the room she's like all right so you maybe you think you're my father or something and he says i know i'm your father and she goes no you're not and leaves yeah she, she literally just walks out that's a conversation that could have been done over the phone bowl it's it's like somebody pointed out, like, hey, did you know this is episode six and we haven't had a scene yet where he says, hey, I'm your father? Yeah. And somebody was like, oh, fuck. All right, we could do it. We can put it in this episode. Here, I got it. She hey. goes to the penitentiary. Why? To talk to him about being her father. But she doesn't believe it. Right. And then she leaves. <laughs> uh-huh. Perfect. It, you know. Yeah, it's, pa pass me the wontons. Mm. It's, 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 like, <laughs> it's so... the Jordan Peele Gremlins 2 thing of... It totally is. <laughs> uh, it's so funny. Um, oh my god! And then we we cut over to Marjorie who's smoking with an ashtray on her stomach, and I get it. Yep. I get that. Uh, so, so Brimley shows up at her motel door, and he's just like oh, Brimley. He's in his like he's in his pale kind of lemon shirt, and he's cotton trousers and it's just all very not when he's badass tattoo which if i was him i would i would have those sleeves rolled up all the time that is some rocking ink he's got yeah nice the height. torment uh forearm <laughs> you know crucifix yeah. tattoo uh, oh yeah but when he shows up he's like listen marjorie i just want to drive by see how you were doing god damn it see <laughs> how, how everything was going and she's like giving a, a back rub and and She's like, yeah, hey. the implication here is that he's a regular. Right. It seems like everybody has fucked Marjorie in town. Because um, <laughs> didn't we see Cam with her at some point as well? I think so, yeah. And, which is, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, as, <laughs> uh, and, and in fact, speaking of Cam, Chief Brimley's like, listen, uh, I appreciate this back rub and all, but I heard. <laughs> through uh the grapevine that uh my uh my deputy cam was here <laughs> god damn it and uh i just kind of wonder what he was asking you about and she's like don't worry about <laughs> don't worry about me i'm a great liar <laughs> yeah i'm voiced by the same person that did sarah's grandmother <laughs> yeah and they would have been best friends on this show see if they had just been together like at a bar for a scene, it would have been the fucking high water mark of this fucking whole escapade. <laughs> Old friends. <laughs> and like the reboot of the Golden Girl set in Waterbury. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. I live at the motel and I'm back again. <laughs> Your we both smoke. Drunk. You're a friend and a girl I drink with. And if you threw no, there's all life's a party. Yeah. And <laughs> if we keep partying, smoking all the smokes we can. 
<laughs> you will see the biggest cough will be for me. And when I hack it up, I'll say, thank you for being a, I don't know, lady I know. <laughs> like, like this is this is like Marjorie is what would happen if Blanche from the Golden Girls lived in I don't know like Arkansas, <laughs> right? Like if she if she fell into drugs, if she was a character, if she had a crossover character in Breaking Bad, <laughs> yeah, you're you're absolutely right. And and so she's like, don't worry about it. I'm a great liar, uh, and he's like really really you're a good liar are you god damn it well how about this what what direction was she walking huh what 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 clothes was she wearing and she's like uh, uh i don't remember that and he's just like right god damn it you're gonna get us caught you're yeah well his point is you're you're so sure you're so adamant your memory is that great that you can remember what time you saw her, but you can't remember any other detail which instantly just makes your story look fake yeah and and when she says like well just tell me what you want me to say yeah that he gets this like real quick like i got a killer look you know like it's all right yeah. it's go time <laughs> it's like what you want me to say i'm gonna poop <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so he's like hey i happen to find these really good non-poisonous drugs on a criminal today would you like some of these really good them, non-poisonous I drugs them, I, I found them off he said i arrested this john right uh-huh and which i think means guy thing is that it's a yeah but, a customer yeah but it brings out what can only be described as a purse a man per- it's a kit it's a it's a <laughs> drug kit yes it looks like a purse <laughs> don't make me go get mine <laughs> you got your surprising. fresh needles you got your your supply you got your cotton you got he, your spoon he, he, but the thing is it's like it's so like, it's an italian a- man bag duncan <laughs> So it's an Armani smack bag. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> an Armani smack bag. Armani smack bag would be the name of our rap. If, yeah. If we had a rap album, Ar- Armani smack bag would be the name of it. That's pretty That'd good. That'd be so good. Uh, but anyway, like the old, <laughs> but she opens it and she puts her hand in, and there's a there's you know there's a needle in there, and it's already full. Yeah. Being mixed. And she immediately is like, "I gotta get some drugs." And <laughs> <laughs> just stabs herself and shoots up. But the thing, I there's a there's an overacted here that I actually appreciate, um, in that like we know straight away that it's poisonous, um, and Brimley starts to like go into like trauma, and you know, uh, uh, yeah, he's rocking on the end of the bed and hitting himself in the head, and she's yeah. like, "What are you so upset about? It's pretty yeah. good stuff." Yeah, <laughs> until it like hits her hard, and then she's like, "What do you, what did you do?" And he's like, yeah. and he, he, "He cries a little bit, and yeah. then slaps himself in the face, and then later on, the the implication of what this actually is is spelled out later on to Sarah in a way which I act, once again, I actually think he's maybe one of the best characters, and he certainly got the most interesting story arc, um, and he's he surprisingly handles it quite well." As an actor, I actually think he's pretty good. So, Duncan's favorite yeah. character is child uh, molester. Child molester. News at nine. Chief, <laughs> Chief Muck, take these drugs. Um, and, like, right, and so she dies at, while he's on the bed crying. And we go back to the penitentiary. Um, as some giant asshole we've never seen before comes up to Tom Winston in maybe like, the mess hall like a pro- like so like there's clearly a professional wrestler or a ufc fighter being arrested in waterbury and put in this penitentiary because he comes in jacked <laughs> to fuck three seconds away he got, got picked up after the circus blew through town and- <laughs> it's like literally this guy is built like a brick shit house. he's a fucking giant yeah. his muscles have muscles on them you know what i mean like and like it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. And he comes walking into the room and decides he's going to pick on the you know the the, the holy man Tom. And he you know it's like you're reading this book and take the, takes the book off and he's like, oh look at this book, oh lots of words and shit. And he's like, yeah, that's a book. Oh look at you, Mister. Fe- oh, well, looks like we got ourselves a reader. <laughs> uh, you know, he's like, what you of- reading for? <laughs> what you reading for? Um, so he's like doing all this fun stuff, and then Tom. Like out of nowhere, 
like breaks out some Shaolin Kung Fu, some Jackie Chan shit, like kicks him to the back of the leg, neutralizes the height difference, grabs a book, smacks him in the throat using the old John Wick fucking throat, throat book smack, puts him down, starts like holding it on him to try and chuck him out, which by the way, Tom, shit way killing someone. You should know that serial killer. This guy boots him off, then starts laying into him. Um, and the last thing we see is this dude head stomping him, which I'm like that. Oh, he's fucked. Turns out slight bruise when we see him later on. Yeah. Slight bruise. This giant man who looks like he could crush a vending machine and like a can. <laughs> like, like he's that fucking huge. Head stomps him. Tiny bruise. It, Tiny bruise. Oh, it's so dumb. Oh my it's, god. Duncan. And what does this scene do out with it puts him in a hospital, which we later find out for. Sarah isn't called to find out about that. She right. just visits anyway. That's, so what's the fucking point in the scene? That That's the thing that they fuck up because in theory, if he got himself beat up, and that's kind of the implication that yes. he kind of grins as he's getting beat up, that he puts himself in harm's way so that he gets thrown into the infirmary so that he manipulates Sarah into coming back. That's something. Yeah. But when, it, yeah, you're right. When she finally shows up in the prison infirmary, AKA the set that they put some curtains around. <laughs> that bad, it? The, probably, yeah. the, probably is the hospital that they're using everywhere else, but yeah. they just, <laughs> just put on different curtains. Yeah. Here I am at the infirmary. And, <laughs> And he's like, so, so, Sarah, did you hear about the vicious quote stomping that I took, a la American History X? And she says, no, I never heard a word about it. I just came. And he's like, oh, well, yeah, uh, all right. He goes, he goes, oh, I go, oh, like that. Everyone yeah. like does the, it's the thing from uh, Naked Gun 33 and I thought where everyone just goes, like slaps the top <laughs> of their head. It's honestly, it's like one of these, plus... The guards don't know, like, even, I don't know, like, Tom's supposed to be quite a sharp knife in the drawer. Yeah. But, like, they're not going to phone her. Why are they going to phone her? Because he's been beaten up because of, oh, Sarah's my daughter. Says who? Says this paternity test that I illegally got carried out and handed into the, like, they're not phoning her. They are not phoning her. So I don't understand the plan to begin with. And then I don't understand that Slasher went to the trouble of giving us this scene to then undo it some 15 minutes later it's so fucking dumb (laughs) so marjorie's motel room is now a crime scene duncan yep and the dumbest line of a dumb episode comes (laughs) when when chief brevely rolls is like well looks like she uh shot herself up to death i guess we call uh call it a day and Cam, cam says duncan look Marjorie's been shooting smack since I was in grade school. Yeah, who'd have thought it would kill her, huh, Cam? Yeah, that, I can't believe that a you know a druggie that's been doing it for years would die by drugs. Right, and I mean, as perfect crimes go, it's a pretty good one because you just yeah. kill her with the drug she does all the time. Yeah, you also and, get her to take it out the bag. You get her to inject herself. Yeah, it's kind of case closed. Um, but, but yeah, Cam wants I, it, like he, the whole thing is he wants uh, the the needle fingerprinted and the room scan and and Chief Brimley is just like how about no God damn it that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> well, there's also there's that like, if you're me yeah uh, like he's like that maybe she just took a hot load and I'm like ah, I bet she did <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah my mouth never forgets. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and sadly neither will my brain until i finish this beer um, so, so all right so let, uh, catch it up with dylan and sarah at, at the newspaper office they get the news there about marjorie and sarah's like it was murder <laughs> and dylan's like what and, and she's like sure sure uh marjorie's been doing smack since i was in grade school <laughs> it's like that's that's not a defense. And <laughs> this just leads like, to... A, no one no one tried to get her help? I mean, right. what's going on here? The whole town knew. Uh, All the kids used to gather around and watch her shoot up. She'd wrap it around her arm and we'd say, What are you doing, Marjorie? And she'd say, I'm doing smack. Would you like some? <laughs> and that's when I first did smack, Dylan. <laughs> Yeah, Mar- Marjorie. What people don't know is Marjorie was the dinner lady, so the kids saw her at you know at lunchtime shooting yeah. up. 
in between serving tater tots. Would you uh, like mashed potatoes and how stomped on do you want your heroin? <laughs> you're, you're young. Is it your first time? Okay, this is like 60% talcum powder. <laughs> it's just such a, like, I, I, like the thing, once again, like, why, are, at this stage, why are Dylan and Sarah together, right? Because all yeah. they do is fucking fight. And it's clear that, you know, there's no, there's no common ground with these two at all. And it springs up here where, you know, she's like, listen, we just spoke to her. And now all of a sudden she's dead when all these murders are happening. It just doesn't seem right. And Dylan being Dylan, it's like, you know, ooh. it's like, well, how about I interview you? We've got the police side of things. Let's get your side of things. And Sarah doesn't find this as a sensitive or appropriate line of conversation, Bo. No, she, she's like, what, you want to interview me? How about you go fuck yourself then? And then she takes off and wanders out into the middle of the night, wandering the streets of Waterbury. This same street that Ariel was picked yeah. up. And so she goes back to the scene of the crime alone when, yeah. I don't know if the show has forgotten about this, the executioner's still on the go mm -hmm. and Sarah is a target. Yeah. And she's already said, you know, Look, they killed Marjorie on account of how close we were getting. <laughs> yeah. Are you paying attention? And so she she's out there wandering the streets, and Chief Bribley rolls up, and it's just like, what, what you doing out here, God damn it? Hey, uh, would you mind turning around throwing up and uh, uh, yawning rainbow chunks, God damn it? <laughs> and, and she's like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? Have you gone mental? And <laughs> so, so he's like, no, uh, how about you let me br take you home, goddammit? He's not asking either. He's basically saying he's doing it. And she goes around to get in the side passenger door to which she says she can't come in because all the stuff's in the front to which she looks down at the seat. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything there. Bob. I think it's like a granola bar. <laughs> It's a tracker bar. I can't be it. throwing that around. Those things are brittle. They break up in the packaging. You can't <laughs> even eat them, goddamn. Like <laughs> a fucking can of monster or something. And uh, you know, like, like and he, he's like, I need you to go in the back. And she just goes into the back and sits down, you know, to the bit that they put criminals in that the criminals can't get mm -hmm. out. And then they start driving. And then we get like this this to me is like primo like officer Brimley, like yeah. shit here. Because he is, he, I, I just love how brutally dismissive of her he actually is in a way which just is me. This is how I'm like with her all the way through this TV show. Um, when they start talking about she's like that, and she's like, says something about, can I be blunt with you? And he's like, I think we're past that. <laughs> like, yeah. oh yeah, we're like so fucking past that. Just but look, here's the great thing about this is she's like that, she's like, um, she basically like is gonna. Is, she's like, I'm gonna lay the facts out for you as I see them, and I'm like that. Right? She's gonna lay out a fucking like a fuck ton of information here to basically prove to Chief Brimley that he is wrong, like that he's not considered things. And all she does is like essentially reiterate absolutely everything we knew, which is four points. Yeah, and here, then says kind of like, apropos of nothing is like, boy, that sure works out pretty good for you. Yeah. Wait a they, second. I, yeah, but the, I was follow. I was trying to follow yeah. her train of thought, which uh -huh. was a shit train. Uh -huh. uh, it didn't come into the station because, like, how does it go back to him? I like Jin. Jin goes missing. She's leaving, right? leaving yeah. <laughs> on that <laughs> shithead train to Georgia. Yeah. <laughs> Allison like hacked the emails to frame the well. Ultimately, right. the frame the dad. So, so the the did, dad but, wasn't wasn't the killer, is what she's proven. Right. Marjorie but, was lying about seeing her late at eleven thirty or whatever. Yeah. So, but once again, I can right. What my under my loose understanding of what she's getting at here is that Marjorie came forward with her statement after the you know the the emails, text messages, phone calls, or whatever were hacked, mm -hmm. and what she probably did was circle to his good prostitute friend Marjorie and get her to make a false testimony. By clearing up, but she would still need to know that Brimley had asked her to do it. Like I'm, I'm trying to follow her train of thought. And she's just like that worked out pretty well why, for you. Why? How did, did Cam, it work out well? Why yeah. did Cam ever tell her in the first place? Yeah, or not Cam. I'm sorry. Why did she Brimley ever tell Marjorie in the first place? 
Yeah, that, it doesn't. Like you know if mean? you're trying to keep your your secret basement wife secret, why tell mean, somebody to cover tracks that nobody's looking for? But she's literally sitting there like, "You, I have done it again, Eureka!" Like as if she's cracked the case wide open, yeah. and she comes to this like realization where she's like. But, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, and then like Brimley asks her, like, pretty good for me, how Sarah? <laughs> like, like yeah. wait, finish that sentence. And she can't because it's bullshit. Right. She's like, Yeah, good for you, cause huh. Cause, and then did, and then we get Did did you happen to win <laughs> like a little bit of money in the lottery that night? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe Listen, just, you, get... you know, twenty five dollars, <laughs> something good, but not great. We get me the the clip that will probably most likely start the episode yes. <laughs> this week, which is <laughs> he just fucking just calls her an idiot, yeah. and it's just not not even sugarcoating it this time. He just calls her like he's two steps away from calling her a fucking idiot, right? It's, it's brilliant. It's just like you, um, what, what was it? How, how did it work that again? Yeah, you're an idiot. Not not for uh, yeah. your theories, which yeah. you're dead on for, but yeah. because you've gotten this car. Yeah, because you got in that, you got in yeah. that door, and then that's when she's like, uh, "Door's not opening." Uh, uh, and then Brimley goes into like, he stops, makes her throw her phone out, points a gun at her, and then he starts going, "You know, what's the, what's the, what's the punishment for pride, Sarah? Come on, then, Sarah, I've never seen you tongue tied before. What was, what was that? What happens? What, what? She's like uh, broken on the wheel or something." Yeah. It's like, bro, oh, broken on the wheel. That's right. God damn it. Sounds pretty goddamn <laughs> painful. I guess we're going to find out. And my, one, I, again, sub favorite to this scene, because there's a lot of good quality Brimley in this moment, mm -hmm. is when she she says, you know, don't worry. Cam will come and save me. And he goes, <laughs> well, Cam is my bitch. God damn it. He, <laughs> Cam is my bitch. He, he can tickle my balls for all I care. And. So he drives her to just a pile of trash in the middle of the road somewhere. Just like it's not just trash; it's just a lot of wheels because yeah. we have to break her on the wheel. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a figurative fucking wheel or if that's just a metaphorical wheel. But anyway, she needs to be broken on the wheel. Uh, guess like this is like once again, this show has a tendency to like when they do want to go a bit gnarly and vicious. I I do like some of the ways they go. This doesn't pay off because the the injury that's about to happen here causes about the same damage as the head stomp to fucking Tom earlier on and yeah. that it was no damage but he basically he gut punches her throws her on a wheel gets a tire iron fucking smacks her leg with it which that's a the way she's acting that leg's broken right yeah, like or a compound fracture for sure yeah, yeah. Well, when she runs away that's not how she's acting but like she's lying there and I get this great line where he's like that you know like I, I, I had never killed before you have made me kill yeah, and it's this idea like, that he's gone past it. Like you, that's why he was freaking out on there because he was a man of the law. <laughs> he was kind of upholding the law, um, and his mind probably. And she's basically she's fucked him. He's yeah. now having to do all the shit that he never wanted to do. He's had to take human life, and if he had to take human life of Marjorie, the one sad soul in this town that actually did something nice for him and looks like actually cared for him a little bit. Now imagine how much he's going to fuck her up. Right, you know what I mean? And she's, but she's just like, help! <laughs> she's squawking like a crow. I mean, she screams like a, a screaming like a banshee in the in the scene. She loses her goddamn mind. But then, as soon as like she has an opportunity, she's just like yoink, and then fucking runs away. You seen bolts it like actually yeah. there's fuck it like that leg that got smacked with that tire arm not an issue she outruns yeah. the, she outruns the chief who's shooting at her manages to flag down a car Texas Chainsaw Massacre style um, as Brimley's fucking just shooting at the car to jump yeah. into sleep and I'm like oh well Brimley's fucked now he in fact he screams the scream of the fucked yeah. as the <laughs> car drives off and you're like oh yeah he's, he's got his gun he's doing the he's doing the leather face thing but he's swinging it <laughs> 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 Yeah, <laughs> and, and so we cut over to the hospital where where Cam is with all the police officers as well. Where I'm like that, we've you've literally you, found that the what? chief has abducted a, a girl yeah. and but, the, and we're all here. This case has broken wide open, and you're checking on Sarah at the hospital, and she's <laughs> like, "Where are you going?" And he's like, "I gotta, you know, because of the thing you told me about Chief Brimley and the this aerial girl." And she's like. 
well, I don't want you to leave. <laughs> and he's like, all head. right, look, I promise no one's going to hurt you, but maybe I should go. And she's like, but what you're being a real see- selfish bastard. <laughs> like He stays there, but what I love is the stuff that happens and the scene that we don't see where she's still trying to get him to stay. And eventually the only way he can get out of the situation to do his job is if Sarah comes along on this bust. Like, why is she in the scene at Brimley's door? Like, why is she there, yeah. though? Like, I'm like, this show is so painfully annoying. But we cut to, to, to like, Brimley's, Brimley going to get some. <laughs> Brimley going to get in some. The, yeah, so, hot in the city. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of, like, slips into the fuck bunker and does the, like, hey, wake up. <laughs> hey, wake up. And they're like, what's going on? He's like, yeah, uh, I'm real sorry, goddammit, <laughs> um, but I got to kill us all. It's a, uh, Jacob, this is what you call a murder-suicide. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm going to kill all of us in fire and brimstone on account of my lust. Yeah, this is this is a good old fashioned Waterbury bonfire. Yeah, and that's what they call it. <laughs> and he's, he's yeah, he's doing the your your illegitimate family and <laughs> and gasoline and set them on fire. Good old Waterbury bonfire. Woo! And so we cut away from the and he's like trying to light a match at the same time. Right, and she's begging for Jacob's life. Yes. She's like, let Jacob go, let Jacob go. Like, please, please, please. And then we cut away from there, and then <laughs> perfect time to cut away, Duncan. Yeah, like we're gonna cut away from there to. Ding dong. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Mrs. Nancy. <laughs> Hello. Like, yeah. Hello. And <laughs> I couldn't possibly. What? Hello. She's like, this actress is terrible, but yeah. like, I mean, at the same time, she's like, oh, like, like, totally has been doing smack since grade school and just done some before and some the fucking noise. <laughs> Duncan, I propose that this is a real no-knock entry scenario where yeah. you don't worry about the wife answering the door. You're like, you we have probable cause. Yeah, you don't ask if the chief's there either. Yeah. Like, giving him time to, I don't know, do something like set his family on fire. You just go in. Um, but, like, like Sarah's got time to use her psychology yeah, on him. She's but, like, you know- Kev, shut up a second. I got this. <laughs> She like Nancy says one of the greatest lines ever. Like she's like, you ever seen those TV shows where like the woman gets to up the house and the man has this thing? I think they call it a man cave. <laughs> like this, like yeah, yeah. I think I heard of that. Yeah, go on. <laughs> it's just, I think they call it a man cave. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's here's like, wait a second. I think I'm putting this together, Cam. You get the men ready. I'm close to a breakthrough. <laughs> Nancy, the does, does your husband have one of these mad caves? The impl- she basically says that. Yeah. She says, does your husband have one of these? I'm like, obviously, you fucking stupid bitch. Hey, uh, wait a second, Cam, before you get too excited, let me let me make sure we got the right house. And it's, oh, oh, it's so it's stupid. So, so um, bad. And so, so, so bad. <laughs> So they they rush in finally, and Ari and Jacob just wander out of this fuck bunker. Yeah, not covered in gasoline anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and so cut to later, uh, and let's not explain anything. So cut to a little later, and Sarah is just watching Ari and Ariel and Jacob be attended by like EMTs and given blankets, and there's a little bit of a to do with like you know them taking jacob to check him out and she the ariel doesn't want to let her son go and, and mm-hmm. on a different show this this might all work and <laughs> and then heather shows up and it's like ariel yeah heather who has been crazy for the whole episode or <laughs> whole series is like oh ariel my daughter and they you know we, we a family is reunited and all and speaking Dylan's of- not there who's been he's been at every single bit of breaking news anywhere but the press isn't here once again why is that doesn't yeah. make any fucking sense or does it Bo oh and all right so because we- Cam like it was Cam in the scene uh I I yeah yeah I think he is he- so I, th- I don't know either we're playing really 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 clever here or I think we can maybe remove Cam I mean, I hate to do that, but it is shaping up to be Dylan more and more. But yeah, uh, you just hate to see it. Yeah. So 
anyway, so there's the whole, uh, we mentioned this earlier, but there's the scene with uh, Sarah going to the infirmary to visit Tom where uh, she's like, listen, I don't have any family left, so I guess this I'm stuck with you, the serial yeah, killer. That's literally what she says. Yeah. Like, after accusing the mayor of being her granddad, <laughs> which went nowhere. No paternity test there, by right. the way. Right. She, but- she has required no proof. She now believes that Tom Winston is her father. She yeah. doesn't need any paperwork or anything. She's just going with it. She she's feels just gonna, it in her gut. She's going to go with it now. But I love the fact that she's just, she's just like, ah, you know, we're going to have to set some ground rules. And I'm like, that. Ah, oh, the cognitive dissonance again of being in this situation. What the f- fuck are we doing and yeah. she, she basically she's like ah, but what i need from you is i need everything you can't lie to me anymore it's like i won't lie sarah and it's like it's like no more lies no more lies i want to know why you killed my mother and her husband so already like like years of this guy being your fucking dad gone totally in a off. second yeah, yeah. <laughs> scored out the family books like fuck like that head. guy he never told <laughs> me that my real father was a, a serial killer so yeah. fuck him right in the ass like cutting out all his heads from all the polaroids and replacing them with tom heads Doozy. like, like, <laughs> like literally changing her, she's gonna change her fucking surname now like just the, the whole thing she's all in but she's like you need to tell me why you killed them and i want every i want all the details and he takes a deep breath as if he's going to start to do it but we're not we're not going to get that that yeah. might be next episode maybe Bo, who fucking knows? i hope it's all a flashback episode next episode anyway i'm the same as you i really just think that we're so close to knowing who the killer is now that we have and we have two fucking hours of this tv show left <laughs> oh that's a that's like that's the whole of you know 2001 a space odyssey um so like we jump we jump forward into like what because i know what you're thinking what happened to Chief Brimley? Uh, Chief Brimley makes his great escape bow by going down to this shanky looking retro fucking. Went down to boat dock. Uh-huh. Yeah, boat dock. It's, I don't know, can we call it a boat dock? It was a bit of wood sticking it <laughs> into a lake. I uh, built whereas... it with a couple of pallets I got uh, from the Walmart. W- with these really like expensive, but nice speedboat that's sitting uh-huh. there for a slight trip down the lake. Um, because that's he doesn't travel far and you know time doesn't pass in that well for all we know time in this it could have been three days of travel but he, he travels down to his other shack um which is you know out in the middle of nowhere he goes in there and this is i think he's going to hold up here for a while and of course i was thinking in the back of my head the executioner's going to get him and then yeah. i was also thinking to myself how, one how does the executioner know about this cabin two how does he know he's going to run there like, there's all these things that you have to take. It's the same with horror movies, but I try not to think about it too much of it. Like, any one slight deviation in Brimley's plan means he doesn't end there. So the executioner just stood in this hut for two days, going, any second. <laughs> yeah. He's going to come in any minute. <laughs> like, it's like, there's so much this has to go the right way. But he gets in the door, he's smacked over the head with what looks like maybe a tire iron. And I was like, or another mm. can of beans, you know. <laughs> Free hold us, deja vu, motherfucker. Quack. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a double dose of fiber. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some repunch beans. Bam. <laughs> repunch beans. Go like, and he's out. <laughs> he's out. Like, so he's out. So he wakes up. Where does he wake up, though? In the uh, the official Bill Murray casket from Scrooge, where he's being set on fire. <laughs> He said, no, let me out. Don't let him burn me. And <laughs> but like, like once again, I, I, when, how, I where, it. who's the guy eating? The, the, you see a guy eating a sandwich outside. And I'm like, is he the executioner? Because that would piss me off. Like, honestly, I will be so fucking angry if this is the executioner. But like, he wakes up in this box. And I, once again, I'm not, into, I, I don't want to see, I know what, you know, um, people that work in a crematorium do or in a mortuary or whatever. But I'm thinking before you put the box in, you open the box and take a look. One last peek. That should be, there should be a law somewhere that says before you put the box in the fire, you just make sure. You, you give it the one knock of, <laughs> hey, you you alive in there? <laughs> no? Nope. All right. You're going to, hey, we're about to burn you. You cool with that? You just, Don't say you anything just... if you're okay with it. <laughs> There's a checklist somewhere and the last thing, well, the, the thing immediately above the button that says, 
push the button that turns the flames on and have yourself a tasty sub sandwich as you chat to make sure the guy's alive. But this guy fucking sets him on fire. Flames are loud. They're not that loud that a man screaming in a box you would not hear. I want to think because once again I'm thinking safety like like if you accidentally put someone in there that's still alive you want to be able to hear them when the flames come on um but you know he's he's going to burn to death because brimstone that was the thing for lust was burning alive um and, and all the brimstone shit and all the rest so that's his sin but then I'm going to be interested to see. I'm not actually. I really wish I hadn't said that. I'm not going <laughs> yeah. to be interested. Uh, it's interested, maybe overselling it. I, I am. I'm curious. Is probably the better word. I'm curious to see how they're going to tie this back in. That this was Brimley in the ashes, which have you know made like that. Is there going to be footage of him getting put in? There? How are they going to tie that back and claim this is an ex a win for the executioner? You know what I mean? How is the executioner going to do this? Is he going to send in a video? Um, you know, it, it just there's. I don't get it. I, I, I genuinely don't get this one, but that does mean that I think there's only one sin. Is that right? One sin left? Feels like there's only one sin left. Yeah. Maybe there's two. Yeah. Uh, I, I, maybe. I don't know. No, because I, I think we've got... Yeah, because we, we, we... No, we've got two left, right? Because, yeah. because we did double duty with June. June was two episodes. Yeah, so we've got Pride um is left and then whatever the other one is wrath yeah. probably um uh, uh, or whatever but so you March know i think I, I i don't know that we <laughs> need to spend too much time speculating i think both of us are like well it's probably either cam or dylan um i think we've kind of written off the priest father he he yeah. seems a little too or obvious. the mortuary assistant or the mortuary assistant who, uh, you know, uh, I'm too busy listening to my book on tape and <laughs> eating a delicious uh, sandwich artist Subway sandwich. Yep. Uh, Audible to... just released Grapes of Wrath. Um, this is <laughs> right. amazing. You know, I'm, I'm trying to listen to the top 100 books of all time from the New York Times <laughs> bestseller list. And I'm doing that uh, here in the mortuary by tuning out any possible chance of me. Uh, hearing a, a live person scream for help yeah um, <laughs> so we've only got two more episodes of this dumb show left or at least for oh, the God. first season when we can move on to a, another dumb season can, of it yeah we, can, yeah we can take a break and then come back <laughs> yeah but i i have to say every episode i'm just like wow there is every now and again there are those like glorious moments where somebody will just yell at sarah and make which her feel bad which yes yeah. i like that it's her much. reactions her rea she's like a puppy dog yeah. like who's just been told that they've done a bad thing for shitting on the carpet yeah. she doesn't get why people are being so hostile to her and i'm like you just need to look in a mirror sarah honestly you just need to record yourself speaking to people and then play it back later on uh, yeah <laughs> it's like, so, so as we as we wrap things up here duncan in our in our journey uh a month from now a month from uh, maybe not today but uh about a month from now we're gonna be wrapping up done. yeah done and dusted. Uh, uh season one so uh thanks to everybody for watching and listening uh duncan should people want more out of you between now and two weeks time when we will be live again if you're uh, listening to the audio podcast of course uh we'll be back in two weeks as well but uh mm -hmm. where can people find you in the meantime there duncan uh, check me out on podcasts under the stairs. Tons of really cool stuff coming out from there, including um, by the time this drops, there will already be a brand new episode of Baz V Horror. The first one in what, two and a half years. Oh, so Baz, excited. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's brilliant. He returns to do Wrong Turn 2021, the last thing he did on podcasts under the stairs before he officially hung up his mic for that particular season. He comes back every October anyway, but he did the Wrong Turn franchise, which we joke about was the thing that actually put him on podcasting, just in general. He'd done, he was done with it. So he'd come back to discuss that one. The conversation is kind of amazing. That movie is not good um so you'll hear us get into why it's not good on that episode so he's back for that but there's tons of other things i have a uh, some interviews uh coming up real soon and a review of a brand new anthology movie which drops on the 19th of march called phobias which is actually all right it's not amazing by any stretch of the imagination but i kind of like the concept that they did with it and um, i also have just got a screener in for honeydew which is getting all the buzz this year yeah so, i'm very excited to see that 
So um, me and you will speak after this because I've got a screener link for that, which doesn't have a number assigned to how many views are on it. So, um, oh, all right. So I'm, I may be able to hook you up with that. Um, so yeah, there's there's that. So and there, I, I've been led to believe there'll be an interview in line with that that episode as well. So that'll be coming in the next couple of weeks. And yeah, tons of stuff there. Um, myself and Bo will be reconvening. I want to say it's next weekend to do the game for mm-hmm. Opera Omnia. Um, so yeah, that's going to be one that I'm really interested about because that's a movie I think both me and you have pretty much said we're kind of... Uh, yeah, um, little little lukewarm on, yeah. Yeah, I've not seen it since it came out. So I, of course, bought the grossly overpriced large fucking Arrow definitive edition of it to sit down. I'm going to do that this week, check out, see what, see what it's like and, uh, and chat with you. Looking forward to the conversation there. But yeah, just loads of stuff um, coming out at the moment. It can all be found at 